session and uh, specifically the, the first session which I'm starting. So I'm again thankful and uh, I hope I can start my the topic which was given to me uh, uh, is coming up on the screen. Uh, So I, I hope you can uh, see my screen. Is it visible? Please confirm. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. So, thank you. Thank so uh, just before starting, I can also tell about IIRS, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing. It is one of the unit of ISRO located at Dehradun, Uttarakhand state. Uh, this unit uh, basic objective is for uh, training and uh, academia institute the objective is to uh, train the working people from different ministries from different departments also it is conducting the regular uh, programs uh, like mtech two years program in with nine different specialization and uh, parallel to nine PG diploma specialization in remote sensing and GIS. It can be application, six uh, application areas and uh, three technical uh, areas where the MTech and PGD can be adopted. Uh, MTech is a two years program affiliated with Andhra University and PGD is one year program. Parallel to it, we also conduct a MSc program uh, of two years program in geoinformatics uh, affiliated with ITC Twente University, Netherlands. And with that, there is one year PG diploma program in geoinformatics. So anybody interested after their master's in science degree or BTEC or a degree as an engineering degree, they can join these uh, these programs if they want to have as uh, have the further degrees as a professional degrees. So where they can uh, really see uh, the, the interdisciplinary areas and they can interact and, and they can grow. And there is very high probability of going for PhD in this area within India or outside India. I can tell the, the students working with me around 99% students has went for PhD. And in that also 90% students went abroad for doing their PhD and they have completed maximum uh, successfully within three years as they have the norms uh, uh, in abroad uh, universities. So the topic which is uh, uh, thought to be given, I've already spoken a lot in uh, on this topic, but I've given some little more modification in this topic the, the practical application areas of fuzzy machine learning models and uh, i'll try to cover a little bit flavor of deep learning models also and the application areas you will see here uh, art observation uh, site using the remote sensing images in different ways so that some meaningful information you can extract and we can think about some research point of view also so before going further uh, in this topic, you will see there is a component of uh, machine learning models or deep learning models. There is a component of uh, art observation data and there is a component of application side. So before that, the very common word nowadays going on is learning. So learning basically uh, maybe for a human being or for any creature or for any, any machine, it is basically acquisition of knowledge and skills uh, through study mode or through experience or being taught by somebody. So, and there can be uh, nowadays n number of uh, um, areas, if it is a human being can be learning through internet and so forth. And here, the very two things which we going on is machine learning and deep learning. This is a new jargon word is going on last around five to six years onwards. And parallel to this, we, see, we should not forget when we are going for machine or deep learning, we should not forget that we have to go for human learning. So we have to see inside and then we have to go for learning of machine learning or any other topic. Because uh, we are trying to mimic the machine learning or deep learning way the machine should behave or like a human being. That means we should understand how the human or how the creatures are working in this, uh, so in this space. And then we should try to implement their behavior in machine learning and deep learning that will give insight towards the research domain so talking about machine learning it is basically an application of artificial intelligence on top of machine learning there is an interdisciplinary 
area coming up, which is basically requiring the technology from different areas, and that is artificial intelligence AI. And here, one of the component is required is of machine learning as an application that provides systems ability to automatically learn and take some decisions and improve from experience without being um, mainly programmed for a particular task. So without it is programmed for a particular task, it should take the decision by themselves. And that is the uniqueness if we can make it like to behave like a creature or to behave like a human being. And further, if you see the mode of learning can be supervised or uh, unsupervised learning. These were already there for last uh, 40 years down the line. Supervised learning means we are giving some prior knowledge as a training data to the algorithm in the form of samples. Unsupervised means we are not providing any training data or any samples. The algorithm has to learn by themselves. So you can see in the real life, if there is a class, the class means there's a teacher and students. So when the teacher is there and teaching on a topic, so it is supervised learning, whatever teacher speaks, teaches, they take these lines as it is as 100% correct lines and they learn. So it is a in a single iteration, the students learn the topic. If there is no teacher, teacher comes in a class and just gives 10 questions and asks them to learn by themselves, you can see the struggle by the student. Uh, one way they may be happy when there is no teacher in the class. But actually, if you see the drawback of unsupervised learning is the students has to do number of iterations in the form of learning. One, they have to learn by themselves. Maybe it is not correct. Then they will ask the friend. Maybe still they are not uh, learn the topic deeply. They, they can read some book. Still, they're not much clear on the topic. They can go through internet and explore. So they are using different modes, learning number of times. That means iteration of learning has been increased in the class if it is unsupervised. And same type of behavior you can see in the algorithm when algorithm is unsupervised mode, we have to go for iterative mode to refine the training parameters of the algorithm. But further, the last five, six years back, when the deep learning came into picture, there is one more word came semi-supervised learning. Semi-supervised means when we have very small labeled training data, and when we have very large uh, unlabeled training data, so there, what we can do, we can go for semi-supervised learning using the seed small training data we can do iterative process to train and refine the algorithm parameters and then we can go for uh, uh, further processing of the uh, unlabeled data the fourth one is reinforced learning so this is very dedicated uh, learning approach which has came up with deep learning where we give rewards or punishment like in real life we get chocolates or some beating with a stick in the old age it was happening uh, and uh, today also here we can see it when we give positive rewards or negative rewards accordingly the algorithm learns and further if you see in the research that is a, a temporal based learning in time domain based learning is also coming up so that also we can explore so the just mode of learning i just explored and as per the requirement we can think where we should go for supervised learning where we want the proper classified data with the labels in the output. When we just want to know how many maximum classes information we can extract, we can go for unsupervised learning. When we have very less training data, we can go for semi-supervised approach. And in specifically in the deep learning mode, we can go for reinforced learning also. And uh, if we have time series data, temporal data, every per day basis, we want information. And if the data is a little bit changing, we can go for temporal learning also to the algorithm. Just talking about the machine learning, it has few major applications which is there on which it is working. One is classification and second is prediction. They're very broad two terms, but today it has been narrowed down. Just if you try to understand classification means you have group of pixels, if it is a case of image, and you're trying to group these pixels into different groups. Like here, blue uh, color we have given for water, and the red color we have given for settlement. They are similar pixels, and some pixels are unclassified pixels. Second application can be the prediction. Like tomorrow, we want to predict the rain will occur or not. In that case, same machine learning algorithm can be used for regression purpose, and we can do prediction. So for prediction, we require some 
data on which the rain is dependent to occur. So if we have that variables, uh, data and try to feed and train the algorithm, then we can do prediction tomorrow, rain will occur or not. But today, very specific application of machine learning has went uh, and we are looking to go for that. That is uh, machine learning to map single class of interest. So we want to map the very specific class which is present in the earth observation data or from the remote sensing data, not just to map water, forest and uh, built up. We want within forest specific uh, species type of forest present in that some damage area, uh, maybe due to flood, how much specific crop has been damaged due to hail storm, can we map that? So that type of application people today we are looking up and today we can see as the technology is developing with respect to data side, very, very good data is available, freely available and strong development is going on in the machine learning and deep learning models. It is becoming pop, uh, possible that we can map single class of interest. And that is again the real life. If you see when you go to market, your basic objective is maybe to purchase vegetables. So you are just looking at the shops where you can get the vegetables. You are not interested in other shops. So what your mind is happening there, you are trying to eliminate the shops which does not have the vegetable shops and you just focus on the vegetable shop. So here also the objective is single object uh, shopping. So same way in the data, we want only single class of interest. Uh, with time, if you see, uh, there were uh, different type of algorithms in classification and regression domain. Uh, today, very common name has been given that is machine learning. And under machine learning, all these algorithms are coming up. But today, if you see some of the courses, they will simply talk about support vector machine, random forest and decision tree. And they feel these are the only algorithm to be brought under machine learning. That is not the case. Basically, as you see the literature today, any algorithm starting with C means maximum likelihood classifier, linear mixture model, support vector machine, random forest, decision tree, fuzzy classifiers, ANN and so forth, ETC. All these algorithms comes under machine learning domain. It can be used for a prediction purpose. They can be used for classification purpose, maybe for single class of interest, but they all come under very common word called machine learning. Second, when we go for uh, earth observation data, uh, we we should understand some of the things before processing further. Maybe we have five band image and maybe we are going supervised or unsupervised image classification. Here we make some assumption that all pixels are pure pixels. But that is not always the case. All pixels cannot be pure pixels. But if we assume all the pixels are pure pixels, then you can see the output. One pixel is cutting one label. So this is getting the label of water. This pixel is getting the label of vegetation. This label, is, this pixel is getting the, la the label of wetland. And this uh, pixel is getting the label of uh, soil. So here, but we have assumed that all pixels in this image are pure pixel, we can go supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, but we are getting only one label in one pixel. That is called a hard classification. But it is not always true that all pixels are pure in the image. So what can we do? Uh, what can we, uh, we do when if in the same image, there is not, not some, all the pixels are pure pixels. Maybe some pixels are mixed pixels or or that can be the case, all the pixels are mixed pixels. So in that case, we have to think about subpixel. Today, very common term is there in place of subpixel, soft classification. This may be coming up from soft computing. So we can go for supervised or unsupervised classification approach. The output is not the hard output as a single layer. It is basically fraction images. Each layer is holding the membership value degree of belongingness of that class. Suppose the first pixel talks about 0.7 degree, it belongs to water. With 0.1 degree, this belongs to vegetation. With 0.1 degree, this belongs to wetland. And with 0.1 degree, this belongs to soil. So, and this can be checked on the ground also. Is it possible that uh, classes are mixing? Classes mix due to there is a boundary of uh, two or more than two class. When the two class are having the boundary, so pixels will be mixed. So we cannot just assume these pixels are uh, pure pixels. 
that can be case one small class of water body is surrounded by forest and this is represented by a pixel now here also the pixel size is bigger than the class size again we can get the mixed pixel so it is all random process on the ground we can, we don't have much control to avoid the mixed pixel if we refine the pixel size of the sensor then we may get less uh, pure pixel uh, less mixed pixel so it all depends upon application but still there are chances that there is always few mixed pixels in the image so in that case we cannot go for hard classification we have to think uh, the approach as a soft approach softly we have to tackle these pixels so here you can see the issues uh, when we are handling the remote sensing images maybe uh, you may get the one here now this pixel size 1000 meters 500 meters 300 meters 60 meters 30 meters uh, 10 meters and 3 meters and less than 1 meter today you can talk about range of data available from a very coarse pixel size to very fine pixel size so uh, as per the application we may get the mixed pixels so here you can see these um, three pixels are pure pixels representing grass these two pixels are the uh, pure pixels of water but there is a question mark it's partial of water and partial of grass so what label should be given to these four pixels if you give the label to this pixel as water so water is overshoot and overestimated and grass is underestimated so we may have under or overestimation of the classes so here these mixed pixels uh, uh, is uh, is present in this image and we can tackle through fuzzy approach only so through fuzzy uh, uh, mode only we can handle these pixels there is also chances in the image uh, due to sensor or from the ground or for the image property there are noisy pixels here you can see the red dots representing as a noisy pixels from the literature we can handle them through mark of random field during classification itself or through local convolution method as a window approach so here you can see again the isolate pixels it is surrounded by uh, wo the water pixel is surrounded by forest so it's the isolate pixels again it can be a noisy pixel if i'm mapping uh, at 1 is to 20000 and, and at that scale this isolate pixel is not required to show but this will come when i go for classification or or regression so we can handle this pixel again through markov random field approach or through local convolution method so here what we are doing it if we add this one they add the contextual information uh, of the image in the, that is spatial contextual information is added from these methods spatial contextual means the neighbor pixel information is added to the center pixel if all pixels are forest so there is a very high chances to make this pixel as forest so it is only possible we can do it through markov random field or through local convolution method few few of the outputs we can show L one more problem we can see when we are processing the remote sensing data generally the classifiers works as a linear separator but uh, that is not the case in the image it is possible the two class are separated long uh, non-linear separation is there so here you can see this class one and this is class two they are separated with non-linear boundary so any classifier does not deal with this non-linear boundary in that case we have to use some extra add-on in the classifier like kernel approach so kernel is a function what it, this does it basically takes the data to higher dimension and it makes the data non-linear to linear boundary once the boundary is linear now you can apply very good classifier to separate these two classes so this is also one problem we can see when we are processing the remote sensing data so when the classes are non-linear uh, we should uh, take care the the classes are linear first and then we process for classification so uh, overall in with all these issues the question comes which algorithm should be tackled uh, so as per my own vast experience i what i found the fuzzy machine learning models can take care a lot of things. They can take care of mixed pixels, can be handled through fuzzy set theory. Noisy pixels, we can handle if we add contextual function of, mark, of Markov random field or a local convolution method. Uh, so that way we can handle the noisy pixels. That means we are adding the contextual information of the with base classifiers. Uh, and few fuzzy models, there are few fuzzy models they can handle the noisy pixels so there may be some paper and salt noise so which can be tackled through some of the fuzzy models 
and once they are capable to handle the these noisy pixels these classifiers are very well uh, uh, to be used to identify single class so if you are expecting water body very basic id very very basic class other pixels are background we can we can see them as a background or we can see them as a noisy pixels so there are a few fuzzy classifiers which can give you single class of interest because they can extract the the class of interest with background and background is we can say background pixels or noisy pixels meaning is same then uh, if we add the kernel function they helps to handle the nonlinearity in the same fuzzy classifiers we can handle the kernels they can handle the nonlinearity in the data one more advantage of using fuzzy models they require very small training data the moment you move from machine learning to, to deep learning, you will find the deep learning algorithm starting with the basic one, ANN. ANN is not actually deep learning model, uh, but that is the base of deep learning model. ANN itself requires large training data. Otherwise, you, you cannot have very good training of ANN model. Forget about once you go for uh, CNN based or other deep learning models, they really require the large training data. But the advantage of this fuzzy model is they can work with very small training data because training data requires time and cost. And in today's environment, it is not possible to afford very high cost and very large time uh, to collect the training data. With uh, COVID just one year back, uh, we found that uh, there is some heterogeneity in the image. And due to that, we can see the heterogeneity in the training data when we collect the samples we have to follow three basic rules the first rule is the training sample should be true samples that we can take care if i'm getting the samples of water i can take the samples of water only so they are the true truly representing to the class second is they should be well distributed that also we can take care that the samples are taken from different corners of the study area the third point is the sample should be homogeneous practically when you collect the samples from a given image, the pixel value of the samples are not same. So practically, the third point which we have to follow for collecting the training data is not possible to fulfill. And just one year back, I thought uh, that uh, on the topic and I found that it is it is degrading the, my results, how to tackle it, how to handle the heterogeneity which is coming from the training data. And uh, we have developed the approach called individual sample as mean approach we'll talk about in the coming slides otherwise what is happening if you take the maximum machine learning algorithms they are taking the they are generating uh, the statistical parameter like mean variance covariance minimum maximum standard deviation so when we generate the statistical parameter like mean from the training data it lost the original flavor of the samples the moment the original flavor of the sample is lost the impact of training sample does not comes when we are processing the data. So with this, we have avoided while using the raw samples in place of statistical information from the uh, samples. So here I can show one uh, basic out effect of contextual. So this is a list four image. Very old study was done by one of the MSc student. And we, we went to the field. It is near Udham Singh Nagar, one of the district of uh, Uttarakhand. The east side of the of uh, of the Radun. and this is a field photograph. And here we have classified the list four image, which is four band image for water body. So here you can see one example is we are trying to extract only water body. We are not in, interested in any other class from the image. So here we have applied fuzzy based output without contextual. So here you can see small uh, there was shadow area, which was coming as noisy pixels of water uh, pixels around along this road also which is basically uh, covered by eucalyptus plantation and they are showing the noisy pixels as a as a as a water classification so what we have done we have added the contextual information now you can see all these noisy pixels have been vanished the effect of contextual neighbor pixel effect uh, in contextual there is a markov random field we found there are two models one is smoothing model and second is da discontinuative adaptive prior so this is the input image as a small portion. And here you can see there are small few water bodies. Here, the small details of the water body was, was lost when we have applied the smoothing prior because it is not able to preserve the boundaries. 
when you do uh, um, uh, mrf they you can see the negative effect losing some of the information due to the smoothing effect on the output but when we went for da discontinuative adaptive prior the edges were preserved and details were still preserved when we applied the da model we have also applied the same contextual information using local information method as a window approach so we have experimented uh, last last year when mtex to and taken one small objective on, to achieve it and uh, this is the input image formosat 8 band image east side of haridwar this is the ganga river this is a wheat uh, area grown because this is a march image this is a dense forest and there is a eucalyptus plantation here this tone you can see here so here we just we have taken raw image and classified and check the its accuracy later on we have added 1% some pepper and salt noise and output was still intact it was not much affected with the uh, noisy pixels added later on we have we went to 5% uh, pepper and salt noise still the output was up to the mark so here also uh, we have studied uh, with different angles the effect of contextual how it is tackling the noisy uh, information content to be removed from the image so further if we move uh, my slides my study will be going towards uh, application in agriculture monitoring uh, machine learning approaches then disaster uh, monitoring uh, urban studies basically using fuzzy machine learning models itself not sufficient when we go for very specific here my uh, coming slides will be talking about more on very very specific class of interest to be mapped with this with that the fuzzy machine learning model will not be sufficient because within the class there is due to uh, spectral overlap spectral overlap means two classes are giving same spectral signature through remote sensing images so once the two classes are looking same spectrally they cannot separate it out you can understand here when you go for level one classification you are just mapping the agricultural land maybe with crop or without crop so you, you can get with crop it is having uh, reddish tone and without uh, crop it is cyan color you can map they are very easily to distinguish the moment you move further uh, you want to map wheat crop and uh, you want to separate with the mustard both are similar crop grown in the rabi season in the winter time and they give you same signature the moment you go for level 2 or level 3 classification or within wheat you want to map a diseased wheat field or the wheat field sown early time or middle time or late sowing so there you cannot go for just using the single date with the machine learning models you have to go you have to tackle the spectral overlap like in a bank two people are making signature if their signatures are same not acceptable that is a signature overlap same way here spectrally um, if the signatures are same then two classes you cannot separate they look same right that's why bank people do not accept the signature which are same uh, so here we have to tackle how to make signatures different so that spectral overlap can be handled so to handle the spectral overlap we have to think about using the temporal images now single date image cannot handle the problem of uh, temp uh, spectral overlap and here uh, in my second book i have made a statement as a diagram that when the spectral stops temporal starts so here you can see uh, one one field by 21st march it is cyan color 26 march still cyan 31st march it is now little of uh, dark gray color then 5th march is light pink 15th of april it is more uh, reddish more reddish it is going 20th of april and 30th of april so with time domain the field is changing so if we incorporate this information in the form of indices with respect to time domain if you are adding the images here so you can see how this profile of the indices is changing and if it, if you can incorporate this profile in the classifier we can handle the spectral overlap i hope my voice and the ppt is coming to your end please confirm hello hello yes sir you are audible clearly and ppt also sir yeah it's uh, fine it's okay thank you so let me continue 
So temporal is the solution when we have to go for spectral, when we have to deal the spectral overlap. And uh, in temporal, we got the solution to handle the spectral spectral overlap. But the moment we think for moment we think to use the temporal images, one more issue may come that if we want four date data, this is the optical images which are sensitive for cloud. And maybe there is a cloud cover and we don't have the third and fourth image, which is required. So in that case, what is the solution? Here you can see the case of a crop. Uh, and if you draw in time domain, the phenology of the crop, which is represented as chlorophyll content is changing. It is increasing and it is going harvesting and then it is decreasing. So this profile we can incorporate through temporal images to handle the spectral overlap. But as I told you in the temporal data that the issue is we may not get the images from single sensor, specifically the optical remote sensing, which is working from visible 0.4 to around uh, uh, two micrometer uh, within that range. We may not get uh, the uh, images from single sensor because it is sensitive for cloud. So in that case, we have to go for multi sensor or dual sensor just two sensor data or we can go more than two sensor data we can say multi-sensor data so here you can see one graph the black dots are data coming from single sensor but in other color dots like green and red we don't have the, the data from same sensor so maybe just one day before or after we may get one more data from other sensor so then it is possible to make this phenology we can cover this phenology through our data so here you can see one case study we have done. And you can see here we have tried to use Sentinel-2 data of 19th June, 29th June. Then third date, we did not got the Sentinel-2 data. So we found Landsat 8 is available, which is at 30 meter. This is at 10 meter, 10 meter pixel size. And this is at a 30 meter pixel size. And the bands are also different. The radiometry is also different. And fourth data is totally different. 13th of July, it is SAR uh, data, microwave data of Sentinel-1 at 10 meter pixel size. So here we have integrated the data from different sensors and uh, got the results. So here, when I say, when I see this uh, dual or multi-sensor concept data, I get in the real life events are happening and people are adopting it, accepting it, like a girl from one, uh, religion can marry a boy to other religion they have different caste they have been brought up in different environment the language is different their skin color is different their uh, other uh, uh, living pattern is different still they can marry and they can integrate and they can serve they can live happily uh, happily marriage life so here also why we cannot think uh, for going for uh, dual sensor which are different in property or multi sensor and we got, we found the, in the literature also people are doing it and we also experimented it's possible and we can get the unique information what we are, what we are looking for. So here you can see from the same data sets, one of the MTech student in 20, uh, she has completed and few papers also published. And you can see here again, the uh, two images from Sentinel-2 of 19th June and 29th June. This was of the Kurukshetra area. And 8th July was the Landsat uh, 8 uh, at 30 meter. And 13th July is basically the image of SAR, SAR Central 1. And objective was to map the paddy fields transplanted. It is not the paddy fields, the transplanted paddy fields on 8th July. On 8th July, can we map the fields which was transplanted by the paddy crop? So it is answer was yes, here we got the paddy fields, but we got one more problem that the dry canal was also mapped as a uh, paddy field transplanted on 8th July, because in time domain in the four date data, what is happening? The first date, the field was dry. Second date, water was applied. Third date, transplantation was done. And fourth date, it was tilling, it was growing further. In the case of canal, it was dry. Then it became wet due to rain then grass came up and further grass growing up so both gave both has given same signature in time domain and here again you can see the spectral overlap problem continuing with the unknowing object of a dry canal which was present in the study area so what we have done to tackle it we have added one more image of 6th march 
which was showing the wheat crop at that time and you can see that canal which is coming here has been removed very easily so here you can see the role of multi-sensor uh, data how it has been integrated and the role of temporal data to tackle the spectral overlap between classes so here the classifier we have used uh, with fuzzy also but i'm here show, highlighting that we have experimented with the same objective using cnn model and this was a structure adopted 128 uh, convolution 64 and then max pooling and so forth so we got the results and this is the this is the optimization uh, uh, parameters we we, uh, we we got it and we have also experimented to add the lstm layer of rnn in cnn make it as a hybrid approach and see its effect so here this was the convolution layer and this was lstm1 and this was lstm2 and we we found this was two layers adding was enough in the model but the model structure was a little bit modified uh, and still we did not got the much better accuracy compared to just cn model so we got it anyway that was the experiment side we were looking at that how uh, this hybrid model will behave and experiment means doing the things dif with different angles and these are the uh, optimum training samples we found uh, even though one phobia is there when we talk about deep learning two questions people will ask do you have gpu and the moment you say no you get a thought that you can't work in deep learning it is a wrong thought please don't <laughs> create that thought in the mind without gpu you can work and all these results what i'm showing you we work without gpu just using a normal cpu at 16 uh, gb ram second they asked how you can get the large training data specifically in the remote sensing domain it is quite impossible to get um, thousands of images to train it so again that's the myth we have to see we, we should take the optimum uh, simplest uh, deep learning model which is suitable to us for our objectives and that way we can see we require small training data so here you can see we have experimented with 20 samples 30 samples uh, 40 and 50 samples we found 50 samples more than enough to achieve the acceptable accuracy further uh, we have experimented uh, for the temporal data using uh, 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 from kurukshetra uh, uh, area which was basically as a small shabad area which is dominating area for sunflower crop and we have experimented with sentinel 2 optical data from 21st march uh, to 30 30th of april actually crop cycle is february to june but we have taken the temporal data from 21st march to 30th of april and uh, we have taken ndvi but if you are a little bit aware about indices we have not taken ndvi basically we have taken cbsi ndvi class based sensor independent that is uh, we have proposed one approach that in any indices formula do we require the known bands or the algorithm should provide us what are the suitable bands uh, to enhance the class so the class based sensor independent cbsi algorithm what it does it gives the suitable bands from the image and to generate the indices depending upon the formula we are we have chosen and dvi we can take the formula or tvi any formula we choose but the bands will be selected through cbsi class based sensor independent so that is the advantage number of times again we get confused there are so many data sets available and somewhere the red band is third band somewhere nir is fifth band in other data set the band combination is not same it is red band is maybe fourth band nir is maybe seventh band so we get lost to locate these bands until as we are very much expert to deal the remote sensing images we cannot generate ndvi because we should know where is my red and nir band so here cbsi means it will not ask the bands it will automatically pick the suitable bands and it will give the maximum enhancement of through ndvi through indices so once we have indices we can proceed further uh, to extract so here we have experimented to map not the sunflower but early sown sunflower as a red patch middle sown as a green patch and the late sown as a uh, blue patch so here this is an example of crop sowing monitoring every week basis as per the data available that time the data availability was five days to ten days but nowadays we have moved to further data sets where we can get the per day data so if we have the per day data we can again monitor the sowing of the crop per day basis in different areas 
what different uh, when the this crop has been sown so not just mapping <laughs> sorry not just mapping the single crop within that crop we can map the early sown or, or or the harvesting monitoring we can do so not just mapping the crop we can go for monitoring of the crop also further going towards uh, uh, urban applications which we done in uh, first covid wave time within Dharadun, uh, we were having the good uh, ground truth information because we lived here only and we have taken the free sentinel 2 data it, the experiment was in the built up it was not basically built up we are looking for the the built up transition that means there is an open land and after a few years some building has came up in this area so can we map that change and not complete built up only the area which has been converted from open area open ground to built up area so that was the objective it was a 21 days case study and uh, we have used the 10 meter special resolution image so the the answer was yes we can do it and we have used two date images one was october 2013 landsat which was at 30 meter we have improved its, its pixel size while going for pan sharpening with panchromatic uh, image of landsat and the second image we have taken october 2019 so mo month we have kept same year is different that is a difference of six years that was central to image and we have taken the fuzzy based mpcm um, machine learning algorithm so we, it, this was possible to map this these buildings which was changed which was not there and this came after within six years the building appeared in Dehradun city so here this is the central image of different pockets here you can see Baruwala was a training site to train the algorithm and other sites like Dune University, Kalidas Road, our campus, Sabji, main Sabji Mandi of Dehradun, ISBT of Dehradun basically these are the sites for testing the results and we are aware about the city so we don't have to go to ground during the first COVID time using the our own uh, experience we have evaluated the results also. So here for Kalidas itself, within our campus, we have monitored that if we are uh, taking the images, you can see the Google Earth image of our campus at 2013 and 2019, the circles, you can see this open land. And now there is Shivalik apartment here. This was the uh, open land with park and uh, A type and B type quarter, which was demolished. And now that is a Vikram Sarabhai hostel. We always play badminton there, which is semi indoor type of thing then a few buildings here also and which within campus and just at the gate uh, there's the one of one of the owner has changed the roof of the building they have put extra tin roof here which was not there here and at the main entrance at the main turn of irs there is a meridian height apartment which was not there in 2013 in 19 and that, that apartment came so these uh, when we have checked through ndvi difference at the building footprint level, it was not possible to map that information. When we have gone for post classification change detection, again, at the building footprint level, it was not possible to map. But, but when we have taken this fuzzy output using the temporal data, it is possible. You can see this is the Shivalik apartment. This is the Vikram Sarabhai hostel. Uh, this is the uh, B is your, uh, uh, sorry, uh, B is the Vikram Sarabhai. C is your Golden Jubilee hostel. And this is the at the main gate, the roof has been changed from concrete to tin. It was mapped and the meridian height. So these buildings footprint was possible to map, which has changed from open area to building area. Then in Baruwala itself, you can see in Google Earth, there was a very heavy vegetation in 2013. 2019, you can see very big building size came up. And through NDB difference, this was not possible to map this building footprints which has changed, which basically changed within six years and same for post classification approach of change detection. But when we went again with fuzzy output, we can see the building footprints very nicely mapped uh, in this area using two date temporal data. Same for Dune University, which is an old university within that six years, uh, two buildings has came up. So this was possible to map this area. Uh, same for Sabji Mandi also, uh, because it is having lot of apartments came in that area again we can see lot of apartments were mapped very nicely in this area same for isbt again isbt uh, of Dehradun was shifted in before uh, 2013 but at the surrounding of it uh, there is lot of uh, government uh, buildings and the malls has came up 
So it was possible to map these areas, uh, which has been changed. Further in this and this uh, work, which was done uh, in uh, 21 days, this paper was published in SN Applied Science Springer Journal in uh, 2021. So you can explore uh, also this paper. And uh, this time in 2022, again, uh, one small 21 days MTech phase study was given where uh, we have basically tried uh, the same approach with a different mode, adding the multi-sensor and multi-temporal images. And uh, the question was, again, to map the transition building. This we got it uh, in the first attempt. But we have went to heterogeneity within urban area. Heterogeneity means there can be open area. Or in one case, there was one building, small building here. There was a small building here. And there's a road here and there is a park, then what has happened within our campus with time, this all area has been converted into one building. Now you can see uh, conversion has taken place from building to building, here road to building and here park to building and here building to building. So it is changing in different domain. Uh, can we map that heterogeneity within urban? And urban is the one of the class which is having maximum heterogeneity. So uh, we have tried uh, to go for transition building footprints while taking care of the heterogeneity in the urban area so answer was again yes because we have modified the training approach of the algorithm so here again we have taken the Dehradun as a study area and uh, the irs campus was taken as a study as a training site and other sites were taken as a testing sites so here you can see uh, for uh, uh, this is the study sites uh, for kalidas uh, road and hathi Barkla, site one uh, the second is Sabji Mandi here. This is the main Sabji Mandi of Dehradun. This IRS campus at New Kent Road and, Hat and the surrounding is Hathi Barkla area. And the ISBT area is third. This one is ISBT area. And uh, Dune University, this one. And uh, this one is your Baruwala area, which was a testing site this time. So here, the data set what we have taken uh, uh, from uh, 2013 to 2021. Uh, in 2013, we got the Landsat, same image, then uh, plant scope uh, at 3 meter and Sentinel-2 at uh, 2016, then Sentinel-2A at 2019, and again, plant scope and Sentinel-2B we got of 2021. So here we went uh, from 2013 to 2021, but uh, different data sets we have used. Uh, actually, the temporal dates were four. So in four dates, we are trying to incorporate the change coming up at that particular area and can be mapped, which has been open area to building area has been converted. So here you can see the cases can be at particular area. It can be tree initially, then tree, then building and then building. Second case, it was grass, grass, building, building. Third case, it was building, building, soil and then building. Previously, it was building, building and demolished, became soil and then building. The fourth case can be uh, soil, then again it was soil, then building and then building. So there is a very heterogeneity and can we map all these things as a single class? Answer was yes. In As per the case by case, we went. You can see the IRS campus itself. If you come now, you will see the main new building has came up here. And this is a new building. But previously, if you see, there is a lawn here. If somebody has visited previously, two lawns were there in front of A Block uh, Boys Hostel. Then there was a uh, bitumen parking here. Then you can see admin building here with library and there is a hostel here. So this complete area has been converted to a one building. And if you try to map at this scale, may not be possible. So what we have done, we went uh, for different approaches uh, with single transition. That means it is just transition from soil to building. Uh, that is D. And uh, um, uh, C basically talks about the multiple transition. Multiple means the in the same area, locality, the sample can be from soil to building, or tree to building, or road to building. So that is a multiple transition. And that is has been taken care by ISM approach, individual sample as mean approach, and it is possible. You can see the C has given much better results uh, compared to the other approaches here. Single transition or a multiple transition we are using through mean or single transition through mean. 
but when we went with the uh, multiple tra transition through ism approach we got the best results in this area same way for hathi barkla and kalidas if you just come to hathi barkla a new mall has came up which was mapped very nicely here uh, so again the c approach multi transition with ism approach has given much better results and you can see this is a new mall on the new kent road just opposite to sarva fendi same within our campus the buildings were mapped very nicely uh, isbt area you can see on the google earth uh, uh, few buildings uh, here it was not there and now the building has came up in this area you can see there is no building it is totally agriculture land now the building has came up here you, you can see totally agriculture land partially in different domain the building has came up so here if this area if you compare you can see here the area has been mapped very nicely same way for this one and, and again when we went for multi uh, transition ism mpcm approach multi means uh, in time domain the the class is changing differently and we have taken each sample as working as a as a mean so that is a proposed approach we have tested and it has given very good results overall accuracy you can see here single tra single trend of transition and multi trend so when we have gone uh, for a uh, multi trend and uh, here one means mean approach and second means uh, ism approach through ism you can see the uh, recall precision and f score and overall accuracy was very very high and uh, even for kappa and the mean membership difference that means we are comparing training site with the testing site it was very very less the difference was very very less and the variance the the heterogeneity is represented through variance if the variance is less heterogeneity will be less uh, so here you can see uh, when the here you can see the variance is very very low compared to the other cases we have studied so heterogeneity i have talked about in the previous uh, case here you can understand uh, two fields one is forest patch and a second is a open land the forest patch is, no, is still not homogeneous so there are some slight patches which is making it non homogeneous as a heterogeneous patch here you can see some is white patch as a dry soil some is uh, gray that is dry grass and somewhere it is wet as a sand color so complete this one patch is not a homogeneous patch and there is heterogeneity within class if you take samples they will not be same values which should be uh, the sample should be having the same values or we can say they should be homogeneous so in a in an agricultural land uh, water is applied but water is not going uh, with equal quantity to the different corners of the field fertilizer is not homogeneous and that way you can see the crop is not having the same health in the complete field it has small deviation and that small deviation gives you heterogeneity second heterogeneity within crop can be due to due to sowing time is different one field is sown today and next field is sown after two days and if you see these fields appearing on the image are appearing little differently or the harvesting is different like sugarcane some portion is harvested today next portion is harvested after 15 days farmer is busy so that field again appears as a heterogeneous so how to tackle it so what we have proposed uh, and we have experimented with the different uh, algorithms is mainly the, the fuzzy one and with different application areas we have proposed the individual sample as mean approach that means the samples will not be treated to generate the mean each sample will be made as mean that means all should be behaving like a boss in a company virtually not one will be boss so that the thinking the boss task is to get the project to run the company if there is only one boss he can get one project at a time but virtually if all are thinking to get projects so if there are 10 people total one boss nine employees 10 times thinking increases virtually to get the projects to run the company same way for doing the projects in place of nine all 10 can work for projects so then the working or getting output from the company is also 10 times in place of nine times so the question coming up that we should think that whatever taught is c means or now we should change it to cism so it is up to you think over it we have we have experimented uh, the same uh, long back uh, just two years back rather 
on uh, near to the Banasthali area, which is uh, one of the well-known university for girls near Jaipur, uh, east side of Jaipur. So uh, we got, uh, because my daughter study, I just go, went there once and I found the crop is very fantastic at the winter time is fully yellow mustard crop. Uh, and I was thinking to get some samples through my mobile phone. So using that samples, we have experimented uh, with Sentinel-2 temporal data. And again, we went for indole sample as mean approach in place of statistical parameter from the samples. And we found, if you see this field is very, very homogeneous. Myself visited this field. And when we went through statistical approach, this field is not coming as a homogeneous for mustard crop. Same way for grass patches, this is a cricket ground, but this patch hardly came up. But through indul sample as mean approach, the grass patches, this one came very nicely near to the airport because they have a uh, training airport for girls. And uh, this is the grass patches has came up very nicely, which is near to the airport. Here, hardly the grass patches near to the airport has been mapped through statistical uh, as mean approach. For wheat also, these two patches are myself visited and these field has been came very nicely compared to the uh, statistical approach the same field if we see further uh, during covid time uh, we got we have continuously got the training data uh, through online mode uh, there is no need to visit the field and we went uh, we got the data of jalor because i was knowing jalor is the one of the district in rajasthan having medicinal crop Specifically, one is castor crop oil. Oils it is used for oil purpose, medicinal oil, and it's possible to have a specific crop acreage. We can map the fields to find out the area. These are the field photographs of the castor crop, and you can see here uh, using the Sentinel two temporal data, it's possible to map the castor uh, crop fields. And the temporal data, if you see the crop phenology, we have taken from emergence, from uh, which is an, a, around twenty second of October twenty twenty. Then by 31st of December 2020, it was flowering. 4th February 2021, it was seed formation. 1st March, 16th March, 26th March was productive stage of the crop. And 15th April was the maturity. So using these stages temporal data, it is possible to map these, uh, this uh, cast crop fields uh, through central to temporal data. This paper uh, has gone for publication maybe by in the few weeks it may get accepted because major corrections we have already given uh, under JARS SPY General, General of uh, Applied Remote Sensing, it is coming up there as a special issue uh, under crop and uh, study, uh, that is a special issue coming up. Same in the same study area, we got the samples for Isak Ghol also in, in, in the Jalor district. So here we have taken the stages of the crop from budding, pollination, ripening seed maturity and sun drying of the plant these are field photographs and here you can see through indole sample as mean approach it is possible to map these is a gold fields which is again a medicinal crop heavily grown in rajasthan and gujarat and these uh, three four papers has been published uh, on this topic uh, which was just finished in this year by one of the amtech student <clears throat> and here you can see one is training approach is indul sample as mean approach and we have used MPCM classifier using CBSI and DVI approach. And it is not only mapping the crop, it is also possible to go for a specific crop monitoring. That means harvesting can be mapped. Answer was yes, because initially we have used Sentinel-2 data for mapping the crop. Later on, we got the uh, research uh, point of view data from CubeSat Dove satellite plant scope three meter data. So this is 10, 10 meter data, and this was three meter data of four bands. So it is possible uh, to map the crop harvesting by 21st March, uh, 2021, 24th March, 2021, and 27th March, 2021. So whatever the crop applications are given, they goes towards uh, further study uh, uh, for crop insurance as one of the major application so here you can see uh, in time domain the crop is appearing just young crop further growing and further growing if it is healthy crop it is going here signature if it is disease crop somewhere it is healthy crop it is healthy crop and then some disease came or uh, some uh, natural 
uh, disaster came to affect this crop in this patch as yellow patch. So can we map the affected crop? You can see the healthy crop profile is like this. And the disease crop profile, partially it was healthy. And after that, it is affected due to disease or some uh, calamity has, has happened due to which the crop is not healthy. So can we map that area? Answer is yes. Whatever the case studies we have shown, if we apply uh, the same approach, we can map the healthy crop or the disease crop. This time, one of the Amtex trend is working on the sugarcane crop. Uh, and we'll talk about the coming slides. The sugarcane is not a basically crop. It is a uh, plant or a tomb. So there, if, you have the, if there are disease in the sugarcane, can we map that answer? It's again, yes. So further, uh, last year, we got a good uh, ground truth data of uh, near Mirta city uh, in between uh, Bikaner and, and Ajmer. So for these sites, uh, we, have, uh, um, uh, we are still working. And for few crops, we have already mapped. Uh, so we have studied rather uh, like uh, samples we got again medicinal crop isab goal is there cumin seed spices uh, i was always thinking to map study the spices and we got the samples of cumin uh, soft or phenyl we got the few samples of soft and phenyl chickpea or green chana samples we got it then there are some trees which are used for fodder uh, like hedgeri tree used for fodder and neem tree which is very uh, abundant in that area Plus taramira and mustard crop. Uh, these are the oil seed crops. Uh, presently, we have just worked for taramira and mustard. They are very similar crop. The difference is the farmer grows taramira when he does, doesn't have facility of water. In a field, when there is no facility of water, they go for taramira because this crop you know, works without water requirement and uh, they can grow it. But mustard require water also. So here, the problem, in the case of mustard, you get a very homogeneous field. But in the case of Taramira, if you see in the same field, it is patchy. Somewhere you can have the Taramira plant and somewhere you can see the soil. So there is a mixing of soil with the Taramira plant. And when we collect the samples, we don't get the very pure samples. We are very, very uh, particular. This time we got three meter temporal data and that has helped to study uh, these two crops and separate them. So here we have experimented with uh, uh, CNN model again with plant scope data as a temporal indices and this was the structure we have adopted for cnn uh, 16 uh, 32 and 256 convolutional layers for mustard uh, we have experimented also using different band combinations in the indices red with nir or partially red with nir and after uh, when the flowering is there we have used the yellow band with nir and in the in the third case we have gone for red edge with nir we found when we have used the mixing of red with uh, NIR and yellow with NIR, it has given much better results for mustard crop. But uh, when we have gone for Taramira using CNN model, we did not got much good results because Taramira uh, was not able to give us the good uh, small training data samples because it, the samples were getting very mixed one with the soil and we did not got very good results through CNN model. But the same data, when we worked with the fuzzy models, we got much better results for Taramira in comparison to CN model. Further, in the same area, we have few samples for wheat and isab gold that we are working in the, in the coming days. So here, I was just talking about sugarcane. Uh, sugarcane is not a crop, and this is a current Amtec project is going on. Uh, here, in the sugarcane, you may have plant first year crop and ratoon second year or third year crop so here we are trying to distinguish uh, and and again if there's a plant uh, of this year uh, in uh, because this is northern uh, up belt we have taken in that northern up belt what the farmer does in three times they go for sowing of the plant in january february then uh, in march april and then in uh, september october in three different months of a year, they go for plant sowing in the field. So we got the samples at least for January, February plant and then April, May plant. So once the sequence of sowing is like that, next year you will have the ratoon also of January and ratoon of uh, April, May. So here you can see the first. So now you have in a plant three combinations and ratoon three combinations. Total in a sugarcane, you have total 
uh, six sub classes so here you can see we have just uh, taken the uh, one sample image of sentinel but actually uh, this is january 30 and this is the field is fellow because this is converted from plant to raccoon but if you see the same area of this year's september 11 2022 it is a fully grown uh, raccoon ready to go to sugar mill so from january to september we have taken 13 images and out of that we found seven images are optimum images which are representing the unique stages of the raccoon which is germination was in january and now it is getting harvesting by october and november onwards this is a very current project you can see the current dates of january to september and you can see it is possible to map the raccoon which was germinated by january 30 2022 And further, uh, we have uh, samples of uh, plant fields. Uh, they are germinating by February 2022. So we have mapped that also. So here uh, in sugarcane, what is happening within the uh, one field, it is getting harvested, not in one day, because it is a heavy crop cutting is required. So one field may get harvested in 15 days. So if you have uh, images of 15 days, the field was full crop. And uh, then after that, it is half. And after 15 days, it, it, this becomes full empty. So very heavy heterogeneity is there due to harvesting. So can we incorporate that heterogeneity? Again, through ISM, we are getting very good results. You can see the same field in January. It is just getting germinated for Ratoon. It is getting ready. And here you can see the same field which has been mapped. And all these green patches are the Ratoon, which was germinated by uh, January uh, 30, 2022 and getting harvested by October 2022 and in the same area we are also getting samples for diseased plant fields or diseased raccoon fields and we are trying to map is it possible to map these fields also so within the same area we have three subclasses of plant and three subclasses of raccoon and within that there is some more class of diseased plant and diseased raccoon also so can we map such a, a large diversified subclasses present within sugarcane? Answer is yes today. Because the data is available every per day basis, we can get the data and we can experiment uh, to do that. In JNK last year, it was possible to get the samples of uh, aroma crop, that is lavender crop. And uh, in Doda district of JNK, you can see the field photographs, the flowering of aroma, this lavender crop and we just uh, after the flowering this is the location of the site on the google earth so just i'm showing you the uh, one fcc on which the fields were present here in this area and you can see these are the patches of, of the lavender crop which was mapped again using temporal data further uh, in the current uh, phd uh, one student is working from fri with me uh, she has basic objective is to map the specific forest species. So what she has done uh, uh, in the first objective, she has tried to achieve to map the six-year-old Dalbarjia shisha, known as North Indian rosewood or shisham. And uh, it is not a fully grown matured shisham. It is just six-year-old uh, plants, which was basically generated and grown near to the uh, river uh, because it is a river wine forest having the pots accumulated having the clay and the moisture and, and that small islands you can see large number of six year old the Delbertia shisho so here here you can see she has used the best 19 images uh, of sentinel one and plant scope of 2021 last year dual sensor temporal data approach and uh, plant scope is giving three meter per day image and she has gone for fuzzy machine learning model and the study area is Barkot Forest Range near uh, to the Dehradun Airport. So this is the, uh, you can see one uh, area in the false color composite of 6th June 2021. And here the green patches are the um, uh, six-year-old shisham. So here uh, in the shisham, she got three categories. One is three-year-old three year shisham, then six-year-old shisham, and then third is fully matured grown-up shisham plants. So presently, with the one objective she has done, and this paper was published uh, uh, um, uh, on the topic studying dual sensor uh, time series remote sensing data for 
Dalbarjia Shisha mapping on a laser, lesser Himalaya uh, area. General of Applied Remote Sensing uh, uh, in, in this uh, just last month, rather. Uh, she's also uh, basically uh, studying. Uh, oh, this was not the slide. So further, uh, we have uh, we have gone uh, to to also map the burnt paddy fields. This is the third time we are mapping, but here I'm showing the outputs which we achieved in 1920 with one of the MTech student. Uh, basically, we want to experiment uh, that uh, what is the challenge uh, to map these burnt paddy fields. Basically, uh, if you see the remote sensing fails here. One way, if you think uh, uh, to map the burnt paddy fields, uh, and uh, the moment you thought about the burn, burned fields, you think to use the thermal images. But this burning is happening after lunch. And um, after because morning, they don't burn because it is wet due to dew. And in the evening hours, it is dry up, up and is ready to burn. And just, this just take one hour uh, to burn the two bigger to five bigger field. Within one hour, you can burn a two bigger to five bigger field, and it's just burning like a paper. It is not like a wood. So, in evening hours, there is no any remote sensing satellite which can map these fields. So that was a challenge, and uh, here we found that can we use temporal data? Answer was yes. If we take uh, one image of uh, pre-burning, just as a dry biomass, and the second is burnt area in the time domain, and answer was yes, it is possible to map. So here you can see, uh, once we have done that, uh, we it, this was possible to map the burn paddy fields at, at a different time uh, domain. By 20, uh, 20, uh, 20th of October, it was possible to map these burn fields. Then 25th of October, 30th of October, 9th of November, and 19th of November. That time we have used Sentinel-2 optical data. There is no temporal, uh, there is no thermal band. But with this temporal uh, strength, it was possible to map these fields around five to ten days time interval and you can see through this anime animation also at the field level mapping was done and this time we are uh, doing with three meter uh, pixel size so that exactly we can see how the algorithm is working and what is the real results we are achieving that time we got central two data which is a 10 meter and three meters is a very golden data to map and study and see the behavior of this algorithm. We already collected the data. Work is going on. But here also we are using one more algorithm called cognitive science. Because when we are processing the temporal data, uh, when we are processing temporal data, and every day basis we want the output. So every day we want the training data. So if we have in a month or 30 days and we want the output of 30 days, it is not possible uh, to go to ground and collect the data every day basis. So we have cut down the requirement of training data using cognitive science. And in the cognitive science, the interdisciplinary area, there we have picked up one of the component called experience. So if we have once uh, training data, using as an experience, we can move in time domain in the forward or in the backward side. Uh, to extract these burn fields and uh, we have already achieved these results and we are further basically experimenting with three meter uh, temporal data further uh, going uh, for the temporal uh, approach uh, one of the phd scholar long back worked on post disaster studies this was basically uh, for two earthquake he has studied one was 26th of january uh, uh, 2001 by Around 9 a.m., this earthquake came when the we were people were basically uh, complete country was celebrating the 26th of January, uh, 2021 uh, Republic Day, and uh, this this earthquake occurred. And uh, we have again thought how to map. Basically, in some of the like Bhuj area, uh, there's a lot of liquefaction, liquefaction occurred, and uh, liquefaction is artificial water bodies, not the natural one. And due to some underground geological movements, activity has, has occurred. So once we are able to map these liquefaction area, that means we can separate with the existing water bodies, and we can map the liquefaction area, then it is possible uh, to go for further study. So using the temporal data of pre-earthquake and with post-earthquake, it was possible to map this liquefaction area. A few publication came up uh, by this PhD scholar. Uh, and uh, further, you can see with different experiments through PCM with Landsat data, Landsat 7 with NC with Landsat 7, 
with PCM and IRS 1D temporal data, uh, different uh, data sets and different al algorithm has been experimented to get the output and see which is giving best result. Further, uh, in the same study, he has taken the second uh, case study of Balakot earthquake, which came in 20, uh, 2005 and six, where 80% built up was damaged and landslides were also occurred. If you see on the image, the landslide built up area and the damage built up area will appear same, right? So it is the question was, can we map, can we distinguish them and map them separately? Here you can see the output of landslides occurred in the Balakot area. Then you can see the red color is the, uh, uh, the damage area of the Balakot, which was around 80%. And 20% was the built up area, which is not damage area. So all these three classes was possible to map again using uh, pre and post earthquake temporal data. Uh, going a little bit for a few slides before I wind up my lecture, uh, going for detection approach. When you go for deep learning, it has a very vast application. One is uh, classification, you can use deep learning. Second is detection. If you go for detection, you can get large number of models and further new upcoming models are coming up like a uh, very basic one, uh, RCN, uh, fast RCN, faster RCN, mask RCN, uh, fused fully connected CN, XG boost, SSD called single shot detector, YOLO, you only looks once and so forth. So these are the models which can be used for detection purpose and in, for different, different application for the remote sensing images. Here we have tried uh, to use detection for classification, for processing the high resolution images, specifically SSD classifier. The issue was when we are mapping these high uh, rising buildings with very high resolution image, this road and the boards were getting classified as a building. So what we have done, we have first detected, the, detected these buildings and using the detecting box, we have isolated the buildings as a localization effect. And once these buildings are localized, and then we have went for classification using fuzzy models. So you can see here, it was localization, the, the bonding box with very good accuracy. And then we went for classification. It is like a deep learning approach we have used for masking the objects. And then we went for classification. We have gone for brick links because this is one of the semi-licensed activity happening in Northern India, good clay is there and people are making the bricks through brickling and heavy, uh, it is used in, 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 in construction. So can we map these uh, bricklings which are active and non-active? Secondly, are they are using old technology and new technology as per the shape of the bricklings, we can identify they are using old technology or the new technology. The new technology contributes less pollution than the old technology. So here uh, we can see the bonding boxes of these bricklings, the point map data, and uh, with the mask scene also it is possible to map and we can get the coordinates of these uh, bricklings. Uh, we have experimented with the same um, detection approach for detecting the hangars at, at, at one of the airports. So these are a few hangars you can see at the airport. And it's possible to get the point map and the coordinates uh, as a point map again and then the coordinates of these hangars. Uh, this is the last slide. Uh, so thank you all uh, for listening. I hope I have covered a large, I've taken last uh, very large time uh, for doing my talk. Uh, this is the first book we have published uh, with CRC Press on fuzzy machine learning uh, algorithms for remote sensing image classification in 2020. And now uh, we are going for second book on uh, multi-sensor, uh, multi-temporal remote sensing data for specific single class mapping with which that now I went to production stage today hope within uh, within coming uh, three to four months it will be in the market uh, for all you to read uh, so with this i'm thankful uh, for listening to me so patiently for it is going to be around two hours uh, i think i have started anyway uh, now if there are a few questions uh, i'm ready uh, to uh, explain and try to handle the questions and explain your doubts. Hello. I hope people have not slept uh, with my long <laughs> presentation. Hello. Thank you. Hello, sir. 
Uh, yeah. Am I audible? <laughs> yes. Sir. Thank you, sir, for nice talk. Uh, sir, I would like to ask. Uh, you said that all uh, we can uh, uh, process this machine learning uh, process, uh, image processing on a 16 gigabyte uh, RAM machine. But what are, what about the requirement of processors? Ah, uh, like uh, we are. Uh, I am working with i i five or i seven. Um, uh, that is that is enough. Okay, so eight eight core machines will be sufficient for the this yes. processes. Yes, but uh, uh, here uh, specifically for detection algorithm, they are working very nicely with sixteen GB RAM without GPU uh, for detection purpose. And for classification, we have taken here 1D CNN. We have not taken 2D or 3D CNN. Maybe when you go for 2D and 3D, where uh, the data dimensionality, the input data dimensionality is very large, specifically using different parameters, maybe there you may require GPU. But my point is for all the deep learning applications, you don't require GPU. So don't worry for that. Start doing it without GPU also. But without even without GPU, if you apply the parallel processing using MPI or uh, OpenMP, can we uh, do this uh, work? On CPU? No, I am uh, working. No, I am not working on NLP because uh, I am working for image processing, specifically the remote sensing images. So there, I cannot say anything on NLP side. Okay, thank you, sir, for nice talk. Okay. Yeah. Hello, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. yeah, very much. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, yeah please go ahead, Ramarajan. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, as you talk about, yes, sir, as you talk about this heterogeneity within the class, okay? So I do have one doubt, sir. Yes. Uh, yes in sir. the rice field, because I belong yeah. to. Of village level, okay. So in the rice field, sometimes the rice crops yeah. as well as the weeds are, uh, I mean, so they are very similar to each other. So how you are uh, segregating them? Yeah. Sir? Is there any approach for segregating those things? No. If you are talking about weed, uh, because within... both, the... yeah. yeah, please. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, both the things uh, looks like looks alike, okay. The rice as well as the weeds, okay. At the time of uh, they are growing, okay. So uh, in the image that covers like same, okay. So how you are distinguish them? Uh, Maybe that hampers the result. About yeah, it. yeah. Because presently the case study what I've shown you, we are using pixel size ten meter. We are using pixel size three meter. But if you t if you're trying to map uh, map the weeds within the crop, uh, there you have to go for UAV images. For that, uh, I was just working with one of the PhD scholar from Italy. Uh, and uh, he was trying to map the separate the weed area with the with the cauliflower. So there uh, the use was he was using UAV images, not the remote sensing satellite images, because there you require the pixel size to be in maybe in uh, centimeter or other millimeter size. Then only you can detect the plant level mapping. Because here I have not shown you the plant level mapping. I'm showing you the field level mapping. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, one more question yeah, is please. there. Okay. Uh, you are using the fuzzy models, sir. Yeah. But uh, there are uh, advanced fuzzy models out there, uh, such like uh, IFS, okay, intuitionistic fuzzy model, and HFS, SFS. Okay. So these are the models which is using the membership values as well as the non-membership values. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So can these techniques are explored in this uh, image processing? Yeah, it may be possible, but uh, see, I'm going step by step, like. Uh, Initially, I came to know uh, it is well known uh, from the literature that the fuzzy models can handle the mixed pixel. Then we moved further uh, to experiment to handle the nonlinearity. We moved further that is it possible to map the single class? We got the answer yes. And then further we moved uh, to uh, to handle the uh, heterogeneity uh, through these models. So uh, maybe because from my PhD side, I have, I've started the fuzzy itself. That was my objective in that time. So from there, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've carried forward to study the fuzzy model itself for different aspects to be resolved for the remote sensing images. So what are models you have talked about? Of course, they are working in the fuzzy domain and they are giving the membership values. You have to see their capability and uh, what uh, you are looking for uh, from these models. Okay, 
थैंक यू थैंक यू सर want to share their views if any part if any participant want to ask any question thank you sir for sharing your experience in the recent research domain for processing a multi sensor data and multi temporal images and its application in the crop insurance sector uh, on behalf of a coordinator i would like to thank you sir for your informative session thank you very much sir uh, thank you uh, thank you all uh, for listening and uh, i hope i can now close the session yes sir thank you sir okay i request participants to fill the attendance through a google form thank you sir